Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today at Bonas High School in Calgary. It's my pleasure to be emceeing today's event. My name is Ken Wipert. I'm an education director in Area 5 with the Calgary Board of Education, and I'm responsible for complementary curriculum and pathways. I have the privilege of overseeing the work done in our schools for Career and Technology Studies and Career and Technology Foundations as well. I'd like to begin with an acknowledgement of the land. Our elders have shared that it is important to acknowledge the land where we gather and the first peoples who traditionally lived here. It shows respect for people, their contributions, and their ways of knowing, which are reflected through the stories and songs that have lived in our, on this land for thousands of years. We are making this acknowledgement at the beginning of our gathering today to further demonstrate our commitment to work together as a community in laying the foundation for reconciliation through education. So we would like to acknowledge the traditional territories and oral practices of the Blackfoot nations, which include the Siksika, the Pakani, and the Gainai. We also acknowledge the Sutina and Stony Nakoda First Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all peoples who make their homes on Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. We're very pleased to be hosting this announcement today. To begin, I'll invite the Minister of Advanced Education, Dimitrios Nikolaitis, to the podium to share an exciting announcement. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, truly uh, a pleasure to be here, uh, of course, uh, here at uh, Bowen S. High School. And uh, as you can see behind me, the incredible culinary space. Um, but uh, as well, um, happy to be here in my own writing as well. As uh, the MLA for Calgary Bow, I have the unique uh, honor and privilege of calling Bowen S. and uh, Bowen S. High School uh, home. I uh, also want to acknowledge and thank my colleague, uh, the Minister of Education, Adriana Lagrange, for being here as well. Uh, Laura Hack, the Chair of the Calgary Board of Education, as well. Ken, thank you for the introduction. Uh, as well, I saw Patricia Bolger as well, the uh, school trustee for, I'm going to get the wards wrong, because I know you guys double up six. I know definitely six, six and seven. I was going to say five and six, but thanks for the clarification, six and seven. And good to see you in person. I think all of our interactions have been over Zoom so far. So. Great to see folks in person, and uh, Andy as well, and other folks from careers. Thank you for being here as well and for showing your support. Uh, you know, being in a space like this uh, invokes a lot of memories for me. As uh, folks may know, uh, my uh, parents uh, spent uh, most of their, their career, and which continues to be ongoing, in the restaurant industry. Uh, right here in the city of Calgary. And so, of course, uh, growing up, I spent many days, evenings, afternoons, weekends, and all available time uh, in a space just like this, in my parents' uh, kitchen, folding pizza boxes and uh, doing all sorts of work to help, uh, help ensure the family business is running, running smoothly. Uh, as well, this past week, I've, I've really been honored and fortunate to have the opportunity to make a couple of announcements to help strengthen apprenticeship education in Alberta. And I want to underscore the value that trades and apprenticeship learning provides. It cannot be understated. For years and uh, even decades, regrettably, though, uh, many myths and negative stereotypes have diminished the tremendous value of the skilled trades and uh, of apprenticeship learning. It is indeed a shame that a negative stigma exists because skilled tradespeople are the backbone of our society. They do it all to help ensure that we can live our lives. In short, they, they build the roads we drive on, the homes we live in. They ensure that the lights uh, are, are kept on and that our homes and buildings and places of work stay warm. Without the trades, we would be living in, in dark, uh, dark times with no running water and no heat. And uh, of course, uh, that, would, that would certainly make all aspects of our lives very difficult. And so it's up to us all to take steps to ensure that parity of esteem is, is uh, supported, to ensure that a trade certificate carries the same value, merit, and worth as a university degree. And since being elected, we've taken steps since 2019 to help elevate the trades, to establish that vision of creating a parity of esteem. We've provided some support to careers, the next generation, to 
help uh, expand the number of high school students that are involved in apprenticeship education. We've partnered with other organizations, including Women Building Futures, to help encourage more women to pursue occupations in the trades. And just last week, I created 300 new spaces in high-demand apprenticeship programs at Nate, Sate, and Portage College. And so, but despite this, more work needs to be done. And today, I'm very proud to be here to be able to take another step forward in elevating the trades. And it gives me great honor and great privilege to announce that September 26th will be known as the first annual Apprenticeship Day in the province of Alberta. From now on, the fourth Monday of September will be recognized as Apprenticeship Day, where we can take time to celebrate and appreciate the value of apprenticeship education, and most importantly of all, promote apprenticeship education to the next generation. I want to encourage more young people to look at opportunities in the trades and see them for what they truly are, well-paying and rewarding careers that take just as much competency as any other professional degree. And if you take a look at the stats, I'm sure you'll agree with me that trades are indeed a very attractive career path. It's not uncommon for people to think that trades, uh, trades uh, professionals make much less to those with degrees, but that couldn't be further from the truth. StatsCan data shows that men in particular with an apprenticeship certificate in the trades have strong earnings. In fact, they show median earnings of almost $73,000. They earn 7% more than men with a college diploma and 31% more with men with a high school diploma. Labor Market and Information Council also reports that men with trade certificates have by far the, the highest first year earnings level, while men with bachelor's degrees, college level certificates and diplomas have first year earnings of lesser amounts. StatsCan also estimates that men with an apprenticeship certificate have faster growth in earnings during the 2005 to 2015 period. Secondly, trade school is also less expensive and faster than many traditional degree programs. And of course, you can earn while you're learning. For most trades, apprentices can expect to work 80 to 85% of the time, meaning that they're earning money while also uh, realizing their educational opportunities. Not to mention the fact that they'll often complete their programs with very little to no debt in comparison to other colleagues. Thirdly, uh, another important reason why many of our young Albertans and, and uh, the next generation should look at the trades is that they will often have very few problems and challenges landing a job because skilled trades are in such high demand and that demand is only increasing. According to uh, Brendan Barnard, an economist with Indeed Canada, he stated, quote, employers are increasingly looking to hire skilled tradespeople. In the third quarter of 2019, he reports job vacancies in industrial, electrical, and construction trades were up 51% compared to four years earlier. As well, uh, individuals in the trade sector can often, uh, are often seen as recession-proof because their skills can translate into many other sectors. For example, a home builder, of course, can work in, in commercial and industrial capacities as well. And that leads to high job satisfaction. Trades are known for their high job satisfaction rate. And another reason it's so high is that you get to see the fruits of your labor each and every day. Unless, of course, you're in cooking where that the fruits of your labor may not last very long. And in closing as well, uh, I just want to reiterate that when we think of trades, I encourage everyone to remember that oftentimes as a graduate, you make just as much as a university grad, spend less time in school, and more time making money and advancing your career. Tradespeople, again, to reiterate, are the backbone of our society and our economy and our world, our lives would be flipped completely upside down without skilled trades professionals. So, on Apprenticeship Day today, and in the years to come, come, please take time to remember and promote the immense value of trades and apprenticeship learning. 
Again, I would also like to, to acknowledge and thank in closing Laura Hack and, and Bones High School once again for having us here today. Thank you for all that you do to provide Albertans with a world-class education. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Nicolaitis. We're so happy to see apprenticeship education being celebrated and recognized as an important contributor to Alberta's economic success. I would now like to invite the Minister of Education, Adriana Lagrange, to the podium. Good afternoon. I am delighted to join Minister Nicolades and all the great people here today uh, in celebrating the first ever Apprenticeship Day. And I am the daughter of a carpenter, so I know ap apprentices firsthand and all of the uh, great work that goes into being an apprentice and being a tradesperson. This is an important milestone in the government's efforts to recognize the significant role that tradespeople play in Alberta's economy. And what better place to announce the inaugural Apprenticeship Day than at Bonas High School, where students are inspired every single day to pursue apprenticeships that lead to fulfilling jobs. In high schools like this one across our province, students develop their unique talents and interests through the Registered Apprenticeship Program, which most of you know as the RAP program. And also they have other career education programming options. Alberta's government understands the importance of providing practical, hands-on learning opportunities that empower students to reach their full potential. We are committed to making sure career education programming continues to support students' interests while responding to labor market needs. That is why we have established a career education task force with leaders from industry, the education system, and post-secondary institutions. They will be reviewing Alberta's career education programming with a focus on grades 7 to 12 and recommending ways to build stronger connections between education and jobs. This will help ensure students are prepared for new opportunities in our growing and increasingly diversified economy. An economy that will be shaped in no small part by highly qualified and skilled tradespeople. It brings a smile to my face to know that RAP and other high school programs help give tradespeople a head start on their careers. For many others, the first step toward a trades happens in even earlier grades, where students can start exploring their interests and investigating different fields of work through CTS courses, which is the trade, or Career and Technology Studies courses, or CTF courses. Alberta's education system gives learners a wide variety of opportunities to discover the occupations they are passionate about, and at the same time, we are helping ensure job creators will have the skilled workers they need. By honoring Alberta's apprentices today and every year from now on, we are acknowledging the vital, skilled workforce that Alberta relies on for economic success. We are also reinforcing our commitment to ensuring Alberta's education system provides students with clear pathways to their chosen fields, and that employers gain educated, highly skilled, engaged, and competitive workers. As we mark the inaugural Apprenticeship Day, I extend my appreciation to all apprentices across the province, and to the teachers, mentors, and employers who have ignited their passion for the trades. I thank each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister LaGrange. These are exciting times for Alberta, and it's great to see the government of Alberta focusing on Alberta's economic growth and supporting a pathway of development for students that equips them with the skills they need to move into great jobs. I would now like to invite Laura Hack, board for the chair for the Calgary Board of Education to the podium to share her remarks. Thank you, Ken. On behalf of the Calgary Board of Education Board of Trustees, I'm pleased to welcome Ministers Nicolaitis and LaGrange 
as well as the valued trades and education partners and their other guests joining us at Bonas High School this afternoon. We're excited to recognize Apprenticeship Day as many of these soon to be professionals had their first exposure to the field of studies while still in a community high school. Career and technology studies, dual credit opportunities, and apprenticeship track programs help high school students find their passion and work towards post-secondary opportunities. In keeping with our board priorities of achievement, equity, and well-being, the CBE is pleased to offer these opportunities for students to explore a variety of career pathways and possibilities. All of our high schools offer CTS classes to provide students learning opportunities and develop career and technology related skills. As well, 11 CBE high schools offer apprenticeship track programs. These programs allow students to work towards credentialing in auto services and auto body technicians, welding, cosmetology, as well as the culinary program we are demonstrating here today. Our students have the benefit of being taught by certified journey persons while still at the high school level. These specialized programs not only provide students learning opportunities, but they receive on-the-job experience to help set them up for success in their post-secondary education and future careers. It's exciting to know that so many of the journeys to apprenticeship start right here in community high schools like the one we're in today. The Calgary Board of Education is pleased to support public education and the vast opportunities it provides to students and our role in preparing students for future success. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I would now like to invite Evan Berry, a grade 12 student here at Bonas High School, to the podium to share a bit about the culinary program and his experiences. Come on up, Evan. Hi, my name is Evan Berry, and I'm a grade 12 student here at Bonas High School. Um, just hearing about how valued and um, acknowledged that the apprenticeship education is getting now, um, it really speaks volumes to me because this is, this is what I want to do. And um, starting in grade 10, uh, two years ago, um, I wanted to try, try doing culinary arts. I wanted to, for the sole purpose of, you know, learning how to cook meals at home, cook for family, and just know what's up. Um, but during that, I think I developed a passion and um, I, really, I really liked it. And, in there, we have wonderful Red Seal chefs um, that, that show you, that teach you different ways in the kitchen, um, different ways of cooking dishes, um, all just the chemistry and, and everything behind cooking. And it really shows you that there is an art to the culinary world. Um, and I think just about a year ago, it really uh, drove me to, I wanted to learn more. Um, so I then got my first job at a restaurant, uh, the Kettle Baron Steakhouse. And, um, I think it really, um, it just, I felt, I, I found that I was learning more and more. Um, and then I eventually moved on and did some other restaurants and I'm currently working. And I just, I, I always feel like that every day there's more and more to learn about it. And it just, it's really, it's really shown me what, what I want to do. And um, if it wasn't for the culinary program here at Bonas High School, um, I didn't. I wouldn't have think that I would find my passion, um, find what what I'm best at and what I want to do, um, and my post secondary plans and and it relates a lot to what we're talking about here is the apprenticeship. I'd like to do apprenticeship at the state university and um, and eventually just graduate and get a red seal from there and and then work my way overseas. Maybe work in a few restaurants over there and it just it's and I really think that. Um, this this is a good example for a lot of a lot of people out there because um, I would have never known my what my career is and I've already started on it if it wasn't for high school and apprenticeship programs and and stuff so I'm really I'm really happy that this stuff is acknowledged here and um, we can all collectively um, be aware that this is what people want and um, I just appreciate for everyone having me and and let me know because. 
I really do think that it can it motivates people to to uh, be able to you know find their career choice. It it all, it all can start in high school like it did for me. So thank you guys. Thank you so much, Evan, and congratulations on your accomplish accomplishments thus far. I wish you every success on the journey ahead. This concludes the formal portion of today's announcement. I would now like to invite Sam, the Minister's Press Secretary, to the podium oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> to coordinate the media Q&A. Thank you. We'll now go into the media Q&A portion of this announcement. Uh, I know we have a couple outlets in the room. If you'd like ask a question, you can make your way to the microphone at the back here. So, oh, well, can I do it from here? Go for it, yeah. Just shout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, it's Evan Barry, E V A N B A R R I E. Hint, it's right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you, um, we've been doing stories, a lot of stories on yeah. uh, people that have done apprenticeship programs. Mm -hmm. I really think um, it was just being in the setting of um, an industrial kitchen. Like, it's, it's not like home cooking. It's a lot different, right? There's standards. There's expectations. And I saw all that. And preparing food for, for the school, like doing uh, frequent lunch service and working with those Red Shield chefs that um, bring you into what it's like in the industrial kitchen, I think I really liked it a lot. And that's what gave it to me. That's what just wanted me to do it. And um, I think it's really going to lead me to, um, to hopefully being, hopefully an executive chef somewhere, or um, or even opening up my own restaurant. Uh, I'd like to try all different kinds of cuisines, you know, Italian, Mexican, all different kinds. There's so much more to learn, and I'm up for it, and I'm ready for it. So that's yeah. that's all. all right. Thank you. Thanks. And now we'll go to the phones. Operator, could you put through the first caller? Thank you. Janet French, CBC. Hi there. I've got some questions for Minister LaGrange. Um, we're seeing some letters home to families about outbreaks of, quote, respiratory diseases right now in schools across Alberta, especially in Edmonton. And yet Minister Copping said on Friday that the two of you haven't yet had a conversation about this. The letters don't make any reference to COVID or recommend anything to do with masking or distancing. So what steps are public health officials taking to test if any of these outbreaks in schools are COVID? Or does the government just not care anymore if there's a COVID outbreak in school? Well, we always care when there's any type of an outbreak in school, particularly if there's a respiratory outbreak. Um, it is something that uh, Alberta Health will track. Um, they, we are back to pre-pandemic uh, tracking of uh, respiratory illnesses, and we take our lead from Alberta Health, and uh, when they tell us that we need to do something more, we will certainly be doing something more, but we are tracking these respiratory illnesses uh, from Alberta Health and then all, obviously from a school perspective. And a follow-up, Janet? Just, Sorry. Yeah, I'm just looking for a bit of elaboration on that, but I have another question. So can you just elaborate on what you mean by tracking, like tracking what the pathogen is involved or tracking how many there are? And I just wanted to ask you, I mean, what, right now we've got a LCP leadership race going where the perceived front runner is promising no more masks or health restrictions in schools ever. And I'm wondering if you support that position that schools should never have any of these measures in place or staff vaccination policies required, regardless of infectious disease outbreaks or regardless of um, some students or staff being immune compromised. 
Well, as I said earlier, um, Alberta Health is overseeing what uh, we do on a pre-pandemic um, basis. Uh, we're back to pre-pandemic tracking of illnesses within our schools. Anytime there's an outbreak, whether it's measles, chicken pox, um, you know, going back to the many uh, flu outbreaks that we've seen over the years, uh, when it's concentrated in a specific area, obviously our schools take it very, very seriously. They report it to Alberta Health. They are then the ones that come back to Alberta Education and, and give us direction if anything further needs to be done. As far as um, how we are going to proceed, we're gonna continue to follow the advice. They've given us excellent advice throughout the whole pandemic. Um, we have, you know, I, I can honestly say, when I look across Canada, we were able to keep our schools open um, more so than any other province in Canada. Our students um, have gone through this very well, as well as can be expected. It's been very difficult. And as I travel the province, I've been meeting with, I've met with about 50 of the school boards in the last um, number of weeks, and their top issue is the mental health and wellness of our students. And so that is something that we're focusing very, very uh, strongly on, that we ensure that our students are getting the supports they need so that they can be successful, uh, not just physically and academically, but also mentally. Thank you for that, Janet. And seeing no more callers on the line, that'll conclude our Q&A portion of this announcement. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.